Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I am out at Julius Kleiner Park today and I've got something to show you. The folks at Freewell uh, sent me some filter sets for the uh, DJI Mini 3 Pro. Uh, now, uh, it's pretty cool. They've included a lot of stuff here and so I think you can find a filter for really about anything you're going to need. Uh, one of the ones that I think is really important is this UV filter uh, that uh, they provide. It has a, what it offers I think mostly is protection for the lens on your, uh, on your Mini. If you take a look at your uh, Mini 3, this little frame that's around the lens uh, is just simply a, th that's it, a frame. There's no glass in it offers no protection for the lens uh, whatsoever. Uh, the UV filter will kind of do double duty. Not only does it block UV rays uh, from the camera, it also offers a level of protection for that lens. In other words, if you happen to drop your drone or, or hit something or, you know, it could potentially protect the lens from getting scratched and so forth. So this is a product that I will have on the drone probably at all times. Secondly, the uh, all day six pack. So uh, I think this is a pretty cool deal that they offered. It's got uh, uh, six uh, filters in it, uh, an ND4, ND8, ND16, uh, ND32, ND64. And then if you really wanna get those slow motion uh, or you want to show uh, blur in your shots, for instance, a waterfall or something like that, the ND1000 that's really going to block a lot of light. Uh, again, you know, I've talked about this in other videos, but why do you want an ND filter? What you're trying to do is slow down your shutter speed uh, so that you can get that natural motion blur. But yet there is more. If you need a polarizer, they offer the Bright Day six pack. And what this guy includes is the same uh, ND4, 8, uh, 16, 32, 64, but then just a clear polarizer as well. Now those other filters have a polarizer on them, so you can set that uh, polarizer how you see fit. What do you use a polarizer for? Mostly to reduce glare. That's 90% uh, of what you'd use a polarizer for. It can, increase the blue and the sky and so forth uh, if you've got it uh, set to the right spot. Uh, but anyway, mostly what I'm going to demonstrate uh, today is how an ND filter will slow down your shutter speed. So uh, my friend Ron Brown recently did a demonstration where he showed without a filter how high the shutter speed actually is uh, on the camera and what a filter can do to slow that shutter speed down. Uh, now we all know the rule of 180, so where your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So in other words, if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you would want your uh, shutter speed at uh, 120th. If you were shooting at 30 frames per second, you'd want it at 160th, etc. Uh, so. I don't know if we're going to abide by that exactly, but we're definitely going to show how the filter can slow down your shutter speed and give you that natural looking uh, motion blur that, uh, that you're looking for in your video. So uh, yeah, uh, give me just a second. Let's uh, get the little uh, Mavic 3, uh, or excuse me, I said Mavic 3, the little Mini 3 Pro uh, ready to go and, uh, and we'll check it out. Hey, okay. Uh, I've talked about this before, and uh, in this case, I'm talking uh, directly to the people at Freewell. One of the things I always try to struggle with the packaging is this little uh, zipper uh, opening that they put at the top of the packaging uh, in order to open it up. And uh, let me show you what happens every time. So you pull the little open thing. And yeah, you just end up with a little piece of paper and, and you really don't get it open. Very well, if you could figure out a better way to open these boxes, that would be so welcome. Uh, yeah, give me just a second here. Okay, let's show you uh, what's in the box. I've got the uh, UV filter here. That's what we're going to use first. So uh, in typical uh, Freewell fashion, one of the things that they really do right is they give you a nice uh, jewel case. 
uh, that the product comes in and it's covered with a little bit of plastic here. Let's, uh, let's pull that off and in this case you can see it's just got one filter in there. It's got that UV filter. The other thing that Freewell always does is they give you really good documentation. If you're worried about how to use the filter, how to install it, etc., it's always all in this package and they also include a little uh, microfiber cloth in there. Okay, so one of the things that I have noticed about uh, the Mini 3 is it's really easy to pull that little frame off of there. So installation is going to be really simple. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to uh, twist and uh, pull the little frame off and you can see there's no glass in it or anything it's just a, it's just a frame uh, so I'm going to set that aside and then here is the uh, the UV filter and uh, let's uh, pardon my fumble fingers here see if I can grab a hold of the uh, the lens and so I, I put it on there and then I'm twisting it uh, counterclockwise and boom it's on there. So just one uh, clockwise twist to get the frame off and then a counterclockwise tw twist uh, to get this UV filter on there and I think that looks pretty good too and it definitely covers and uh, protects the lens. Okay, this is the, uh, the all-day six-pack, and, uh, and same kind of thing. It's basically the same jewel case, uh, but you can see all the lenses uh, in there, the lens covers, ND filters, I should say, uh, in there. And what we're going to do today, first we're going to fly with just that UV filter, and we're going to look at what our shutter speed is, because obviously it's not darkening anything, so we'll use the histogram to get the, the, uh, the right uh, exposure value, and we'll look at what that shutter speed is and then I'm going to put the uh, ND64 on there and we'll be able to show you the difference and show you how much it show, slows that shutter speed down uh, so that you can get the motion blur that you're looking for. So uh, yeah, let's get this bird in the air. Hey guys, I got a little bit of a confession to make here. So this is a little bit of a redo. Uh, I, I, I'm flying now with just the uh, UV filter on the drone and you can see on the screen recording we are way overexposed. Uh, I did this flight once already however I don't think that I saved the screen recording so uh, so we're gonna try it again. So you can see we need to change our uh, our shutter speed and I can tell you from my previous experience we're gonna have to go way up to uh, yeah you can see it start to come in there. Uh, 8,000 is too much but I was about at uh, 3200 before and if you look at the histogram there on the left hand side of the screen you can see that's just about right uh, to give us the exposure value that is with no ND filter at all so uh, let's go ahead and uh, and take off here start recording and we are in uh, 4k 30 frames per second uh, let's do a uh, let's do a manual takeoff I'm gonna do both sticks in it's gonna give us that uh, Warning, I'm going to say do not show again about the uh, props. Uh, both sticks down and in. And left stick up. And there's a little drone in the air. And uh, I'm going to shut off obstacle avoidance here for just a second. Whoops. Safety is what I want. Obstacle avoidance off. Because I want to bring the, the, the drone in here nice and close. Uh, for you guys to uh, see what it looks like uh, with that with that filter on there. So let's bring it in here to the camera a little bit. Yeah, we can come down just a little. Get right in front of that lens uh, on the GoPro. I guess I better check and make sure the GoPro is recording with the problems I have had with it, and, and it is. Ah, no, there it just quit. Look at that. GoPro didn't let me down. Let's uh, see if we can fire it back up here. And we're recording again. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a big clap here so I can, uh, I can use that to uh, uh, synchronize the uh, footage. Uh, uh, crazy stuff. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's move the drone over a little bit, uh, and uh, that you can see you can see that just through me. I I am just all but done with GoPro. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's wiggle the drone back and forth, and you can see uh, how that uh, gimbal works there. Pretty. Uh, I I just always think that's amazing technology. That's why I like to show that. Okay, so I'm going to back the drone up, and we are going to engage uh, obstacle avoidance again. Put it on bypass mode. Obstacle avoidance is on, and I'm going to move around here, and we're going to do our droney. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, it's a good thing I was standing next to the GoPro to, to see that it, uh, that it quit recording. Uh, and by the way, I, I've said this before, but GoPro tells me that is perfectly normal, that your, uh, your camera can just randomly quit recording while it's in 4K. It says uh, that it senses it gets too hot. Well, we're on a breezy, cool day today, so I'm going to do our uh, droney because we got some folks coming. Here, and I want to get up in the air before they uh, walk by. And there we are. So again, let's look at that histogram, and it looks pretty good there, right? We're at, uh, at uh, we got two mountains there. The sky is the one that you're going to see off on the right-hand side of the histogram. And the ground is what you're going to see on the, uh, the left-hand side of the histogram. So, uh, so let's kind of move around here and kind of give you a look at uh, what we're seeing here. And there's the pond right there. We're definitely going to go over both of these ponds. So let's move over the top of that. And I think our exposure looks pretty good. And again, what I want to point out to you is how high that shutter speed is at a uh, 32 thousandths of a second, you are not going to get uh, any motion blur. It's going to stop action uh, completely. And there I just heard the GoPro quit again. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to let that go. And let's see. I don't know what happened here. We popped back into the GoFly menu for some reason. Yeah, that was odd. It uh, popped back in the Go Fly menu, or, or the main menu, for a second there, and I'm not sure why. You'll see that on the screen recording. Uh, and we do have a jet aircraft above us. He is way up there. But what I wanted to do was get in on the uh, on the fountain here, and and we're going to do uh, kind of a quick uh, orbit around the fountain. I'm going to put it in cinema mode, and what you're going to see at uh, a 32 uh, thousandths of a second shutter speed, uh, yeah, we're going to see uh, uh, every drop of water that comes off of that thing because that quick shutter speed is just really going to stop action. So there you can see that. And you know, I, I, uh, you're going to be able to, like I said, you're going to be able to see every drop of water that comes off of that. Okay, let's turn back around and pick up that camera again. And, uh, and we're going to go over on the other side. And we'll do the same thing on that fountain over there. Let's grab some altitude. And let's head over to that other fountain and let's take a look at that. And we're in cinema mode still, but that's okay. That's going to get us there plenty fast, six meters per second. Let's drop back down again. And I see some folks there on the little uh, fishing pier, so I want to make sure that I am uh, not too terribly close to them. So I'm going to move in on the fountain here quite a bit as we do our rotation here. And uh, let's go ahead and rotate. Whoops, I got a little, little too quick on the sticks there. But there's that fountain and again, you're gonna see every drop of water coming off that fountain because we've got such a high uh, shutter speed. 
Again though, that UV filter is protecting our lens from UV light and uh, more importantly, I think it's just a good protection on your lens uh, just to keep it, uh, you know, in, in case you had some kind of accident, you dropped the drone accidentally or something, and you're gonna, not going to scratch that lens with that protector on there. I think that's just something I'm going to leave on the drone uh, full time. Okay, let's pick the camera back up. And the other thing that we can do here is we can go out onto... Uh, the street, uh, Fairview Avenue, one of the busiest streets in Idaho, although not too terribly busy today. Let's throw it in normal mode so we can get some speed up. And uh, we can look at the traffic going by out there and get an idea of uh, what you're not going to see is you're not going to see any motion blur in that traffic. You're going to see every move of those vehicles uh, going through there. Let's kind of focus in on the uh, intersection here. And let's drop some altitude. Dropping some altitude down. You're hearing my phone ringing there. I'm not going to answer that right now. So you can see the traffic moving there. Let's drop down a little bit. I think I was down about, I was down quite low uh, when I did this previously. And it, you end up getting a little bit of, uh, because I've got terrain blocking us, you get a little bit of uh, 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 blocking us on FPV. And uh, you can see our signal is in the orange there, but that's okay. So we're just going to leave it here for a second and let, watch the... Uh, lights change and watch those cars go through and you're going to see them all very clearly and distinctly without any motion blur which is not natural to the human eye. The human eye actually sees blur uh, in motion and that's the point of an ND filter is you're trying to achieve that and this street is uh, it's just amazing how the lack of traffic uh, on the street here and I just heard the GoPro turn off. <laughs> Good for you, GoPro. Uh, okay, so there is uh, some more traffic moving. Let's uh, let's raise in height here, and so you can see these guys going by. And again, you're not going to see any motion blur at all. You're going to see these guys just uh, uh, moving right through the intersection. So I'm guessing that's about enough of that. You guys have probably seen enough of that. Let's, uh, let's pick the camera up and move around. And boy, the, the, they're, I'm just amazed. Usually these parking lots are just absolutely chuck full at the uh, mall here. So uh, it's pretty clear everybody's getting ready for their picnics at home and so forth. Let's see, we're about 50 meters high. We don't need to be that high. I'm going to drop it down just a little here. And you know our exposure value looks uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing uh, definition in the sky and so forth. So that 32 thousandths is uh, is right where we need to be. Uh, so anyway, let's throw it in sport mode and let's bring this guy back to us. And here is sport mode. move over I see that car pulling out so we'll we'll move over from where he's at and bring it back I am going to let's just for the fun of it let's throw this thing back in auto and see what that looks like now that's not going to tell us uh, you, you know you can't see when it's in auto you can't see what the what it's uh, what the uh, shutter speed is so Anyway, there we go. We've got uh, we've got a fair amount of uh, battery power left here, and I sure hate to waste that. Doggone it! When I got battery, I want to fly, right? So let's kind of give you a little look around here. Let's put it back in normal mode and move forward on the. Uh, on the sculpture here and you could see there as I drop the camera you could see the exposure value 
changing while it's in automatic. That is uh, something cool. Something cool that uh, that DJI provides, and they do a pretty darn good job with it. I've flown other drones that it seems like that exposure value adjusts so much that it's a distraction. DJI has got that down to where it, it isn't really a distraction. This is a band shell here, and I've talked about this guy before. It's uh, facing due west, so they had to put those canopies over the top so that in the evening, whoever's performing in, in there isn't just blinded. <laughs> let's pick that camera back up. And let's see, I don't see, we're not in, we're going to stay a little bit over the water so we're not over the top of anybody. But uh, again, uh, let's show you, you can, you're going to see uh, folks down here uh, fishing. We're not going to get too low. I'm going to put it in cinema mode. We're not going to get too low because we don't want to, we don't want to bother anybody, but uh, you know, those are folks, uh, they, they stock this pond with fish, so they, people uh, often just uh, bring their fishing pole and throw it over the side there, and I've, I've seen them catching fish before. Again, I'm kind of struck by how few people there are in the park. Uh, again, you know, as a holiday weekend, let's see, I think we're clear here. I don't see anybody below us, so we can kind of move forward here and... Uh, look over the top of uh yeah i see some folks right there but there is julius kleiner himself that's uh he is the uh, uh who the park is named after uh his family donated the land for this park and he uh he was an entrepreneur uh in the treasure valley farmer dairyman did a lot of things and i think this was at one point, this was a dairy farm, but I don't think he had a dairy here. I think he actually farmed the land. Anyway, back over the pond and, uh, you know, giving you a little bit more of a, uh, a tour of the, uh, uh, of the uh, park here is kind of a bonus uh, to the uh, Freewell filter uh, review. Uh, and again, we're in automatic, and I have to tell you, that's typically how I fly because I just think it uh, it looks pretty good. And one of the things that I've figured out here on this particular flight is if it's much of a sunny day at all, that ND64 is in no way too dark. So let's bring it back to us here, and we'll bring it in for a landing. Again, I am... Uh, Looking to make sure we're not flying over the top of anybody there, but the, and there is a, uh, I call it frisbee golf, but they would get mad if they heard me say that. They call it disc golf, uh, and you, a lot of folks take advantage of it here at the park. Let's bring the drone back as we come back here. There she is. There's the little drone. Elevator coming down. Think I can do a better job of uh, landing this time? What do you think? Let's bring it over the top. Yeah, and it sees me there. Obstacle avoidance. Let's uh, drop that camera down and uh, bring it over the top of the uh, landing pad. And, and again, we are in, we're in, whoa, boy, even in cinema, this guy moves pretty quick. So, man, a big gust of wind came up and it really blows the drone around. Back it up just a little. Little more. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this in the wind. Yeah, see, I, it's hard for me to get that adjusted just right. That is probably as close as I'm going to get. So I'm going to hold that stick straight down and let's see what we get. And it should lift the camera as it comes down. And I see it moving off just a little and it lifted the camera. But look, we got right on the pad that time. Uh, Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, this time, 
And that, that you know, it's kind of cool that I can point the camera up so you can see me. I am going to uh, uh, stop recording. And I'm going to uh, stop the uh, screen recording. I think that's what I forgot last time. Okay, we're going to take the uh, the UV filter off of the uh, 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 the uh, Mini Three, and again, you just I'm just turned it counterclockwise, and it popped right off. Uh, and I don't know if you're going to be able to read that, but this is the ND64, uh, and so uh, I'm trying to do this without blocking, so you guys can see it. But uh, yeah, slide it on there. It's always tricky holding the uh, camera and getting the lens on at the same time and trying to show it to you guys on the GoPro. Okay, I've got it on there now and we're going to go, uh, we just went uh, uh, clockwise with it and it just pops right on, so very easy. So there again, that's, uh, that's definitely sunglasses for the camera on your drone, uh, Andy 64. And I really on a day like today, I might have just chosen the 32 but I really want to be able to show you the dramatic uh, difference that a darker ND filter can make in your shutter speed. So uh, let's get this drone in the air again. Okay, so one of the things that I see right off the bat is you're looking at the screen recording and we can see nothing on there. So uh, we're gonna have to shave, uh, with that ND64 and the shutter speed set at uh, 1 32 thousandths of a second, that is way too much. So. That'll uh, show us that how much we can bring it down. So there's an 800th and it's still pretty dark. Uh, there's 400, that's still pretty dark. So really, uh, if we went by that 180 rule, we would want to be at about uh, uh, a 60th of a second. And that looks to me like it's going to be pretty close. There's 120th, that's closer. There's uh, uh, a hundredth of a second. That's even closer yet. Let's go down to an 80th. That it looks better to me. I don't know. We might have chose just right because there's 1 60th uh, and we're shooting at uh, 30 frames per second. So that's that 180 rule exactly. And look at that histogram. We got the mountains uh, right in the middle of it. So uh, that's where we're going to start and that'll show how much it uh, slows down your shutter speed. So let's go ahead and start recording. And of course the GoPro randomly quit again. Uh, let's again do a manual takeoff and it'll give us that warning for the prop check, check complete. I need to click do not show again. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> there we go. That finally went away, okay. Uh, so let's uh, kick that left stick up, and there we are. And I always forget about that. Let's just go ahead and go straight up. And we did our droney earlier, so we don't need to do that again. Let's drop that camera down, get to the rule of thirds. And look at the histogram. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? We got the mountain on the right-hand side that's, uh, that's the sky, and then the rest of it. Uh, is the ground. So that uh, ND64 is clearly the perfect filter uh, for what we need today. So that's looking really good. Let's go ahead and uh, grab some more altitude. 22 meters high. I think that's about what we were before. I'm dropping that camera down a little bit. And let's go back over the uh, the uh, the uh, pond here. And what you're going to see now is particularly like when we look at the uh, at the uh, uh, fountain here. I'm going to drop some altitude. You're going to see uh, some natural looking motion blur. Uh, and let's just do a quick kind of little uh, little miniature. Yeah, it's telling us we're in an altitude zone. Let's uh, do a little orbit here. I'm in normal mode. I should be in cinema mode to do this. But what you're going to see is on the uh, on the fountain there, you're going to be able to see some motion blur in that water that we definitely didn't see with uh, one thirty-two thousandths 
uh, without a, uh, a filter on there. So, uh, gosh, I'm telling you, this is, uh, I think, a pretty good demonstration of uh, where you need to be to get natural looking motion blur in your video and why using an ND filter can be important. Uh, so uh, again, let's go, let's go across the road here, grabbing a little altitude and, uh, and we can look at the other fountain here. I'm trying to think of uh, where we could find some more uh, movement and see some motion blur. There is a street off on the other side there. I'm dropping the camera down here a little bit and we're going to give you uh, another, uh, you know, you look at the top of that fountain. Let's drop down a little bit and move in a little closer. And we should be seeing some good motion blur on that fountain. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do, I put it in uh, cinema mode and we're going to see if we can do just a little, a uh, little bit of an orbit around this guy. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Pretty darn good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that that is definitely going to show you uh, what uh, what you can do, and you're going to get uh, you're looking at motion blur in that fountain. Uh, so, good job uh, with uh, free well. I mean, that's uh, that's exactly what we uh, we want to do. Okay, let's get some uh, altitude again. And I think the other thing that we could do here probably is maybe go out and look at, there's a pretty busy street uh, over here on the other side of CarMax. And we may be able to see some motion blur over there. So uh, let's go ahead and put it back in normal mode. And we'll, uh, we'll kind of get down uh, by the street over here. And, uh, and maybe even look at this intersection a little bit. Uh, we'll be, of course, out in the field here. And, uh, you know, as those cars go by, you're going to see some natural looking motion blur as opposed to if we'd have been at that 32, 30, uh, yeah, 32 thousandths of a second. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I dropped altitude, so it's telling me to adjust antennas. But uh, so let's look at these cars as they go by here. Yeah, and I'm getting a kind of a weak signal because I am so low, but we're okay. Uh, let's uh, let's wait for that light to change, and let's watch these cars go by at uh, uh, a 60th of a second, and you're going to see some natural-looking motion blur. We're seeing some breakup on FPV, and that's because I've got the, uh, uh, and there's the signal change. That's because I've got the drone so low. We're only 14 meters high, so, and I'm shooting through uh, terrain here and so forth. We'll, uh, we'll leave it down here for a second. We're in red. It, it, yeah, no, now it's coming back up. Okie dokie. Let's, uh, let's raise some altitude. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to drop that camera down as we go. Not a lot of traffic on this July 4th. Usually this street is a lot busier. So anyway, that's just to demonstrate and show you uh, what that ND filter can do to give you that natural uh, motion blur. And I just wanted to give you some... Uh, uh, some, some movement so that you could see it. And again, looking at that histogram, look, we got that mountain, right? It's a little bit to the left, but that tells me that we're, uh, that, uh, we're in pretty good shape with regard to our exposure values. So let's go ahead and pick that camera up. And boy, you can see the shopping center. That usually is packed by this time of day. So everybody's home enjoying... Uh, our nation's birthday here, the 4th of July. Okie dokie. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy in gear and, uh, and bring it back to us, and we'll bring it in for a landing. Let's do sport mode just for the fun of it, and let's see how quick we could get this guy back, uh, see what kind of speed we can get up to. 
Yeah, and, uh, almost. We're 15.8 meters per second. The advertised top speed on this drone is 16 meters per second, and uh, we do have a wind today, so I'm sure that's making a difference. And I am full stick forward here. Let's start dropping some altitude as we come back. 30 meters high, and you can see me over there. The uh, the Tahoe right there, and I'm right by that tree. Let's uh, let's let that car go by before we cross the road. And now we go. And the drone is uh, right above us, so let's uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, put the guy in uh, cinema mode so that we'll slow it down here and we can get a landing. And we're pretty close there. Let's drop it straight down and see if we can get on the pad. I don't have the uh, depth perception that uh, a lot of you guys have, uh, so I was struggle. And the drone's coming right down. Let's, let's get it a little lower, see if we can get it right over the top of the pad. There we are. I'm going to pull that stick straight down, pick the camera up, <laughs> and the stick straight down. And it's, uh, it's well off the pad. We mowed some grass. Motor stuck, it says. Uh, yeah, so it definitely moved off there. Uh, okay, let's stop recording, and I need to stop the screen recording. Hey, okay, uh, the DJI Mini 3 uh, with the uh, uh, Freewell uh, ND filter kits. And again, uh, what you're seeing on the drone right now is the, uh, the UV filter. And that's something that I'm just going to leave on this drone permanently. Again, not only does it block UV rays from the lens, but it uh, also acts as a protector. And, and I think that's important. And, and for no other reason, it's a good reason to have it. So uh, what we did today is uh, with the uh, with the all day six pack, uh, we used the ND64. And we showed that the ND64, and this is even a little bit of a cloudy day, it got us right down to that 180 rule where uh, we were shooting at a 60th of a second with our frame rate, rate set at uh, 30 frames per second. Uh, but, uh, but also, don't forget the uh, Bright Day 6-pack uh, that if you want a polarizer, this includes polarizers on all of the ND filters plus just a polarizer by itself. So uh, great kits that uh, Freewell is offering. And I think we pretty dramatically showed what that ND filter uh, does for you today. So anyway, uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out, and if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I absolutely appreciate you taking the time to look at this video, and of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. A little bit of bonus footage, footage here. Uh, you guys saw me have a lot of problems again with the GoPro. One of the things... You know, you've seen on a series of videos, I've been having problems with my Hero 10 and the Hero 9. Hero 10 way more than the Hero 9. However, one of the things that I was hoping would change this time is uh, that I, I know that these can be very sensitive to uh, whatever kind of micro SD card you put in there. Uh, GoPro recommends the SanDisk Extreme cards. That's what I have in it. Uh, but one of the things that I did this time, it is upgraded to the latest firmware, uh, but then I also uh, formatted the card within the camera itself. So often what I do is I either I just delete the pictures out of it and use the same card, or I will format the card on my computer. And I thought, well, maybe that could be causing some problems. So this time I formatted the card on the camera itself hoping that then that might make a difference and and it didn't at all uh, the other thing that I thought is I, I've got the the uh, camera sitting on the the uh, Volta uh, little charger tripod that GoPro has I was pretty excited about that and I thought but but I thought that that might be causing some of my problems uh, it, it isn't because I didn't even plug it in this time I've just got the regular battery in there 
and we still had uh, a shutdown. So I don't know what to say. Uh, like I said, I spent a long time uh, on the phone with uh, GoPro and, you know, they had me do a bunch of stuff uh, and testing and so forth. And at, at the end, they told me, well, that's just the way the camera operates. If, you know, if you're shooting in 4K, uh, in between a, a minute or five minutes or so, it'll just shut. It, it can shut down because uh, it's detecting heat. Well, maybe I, I don't know. Well, what's the point of offering 4K then if you can't use it? And conversely, when I first got this camera, it worked fine. I could shoot in 4K, so it tells me that it's something else. And my Hero 9, often I've, I've shot for 40 minutes with it shooting in 4K before without a problem. So. I don't even know what to say. I can tell you this. I am uh, pretty uh, not real happy with GoPro. So uh, I'm going to try uh, the DJI uh, Action 2 camera and we'll see how, uh, see what I can do with it. And, uh, you know, maybe some other options there too. I still have my Canon M50. I like these smaller action cameras just because of convenience. Anyway, the GoPro for sure is not working for me. Uh, okay, see you guys later. Bye.